Well, hello, lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing a chatty get ready with me. So go grab yourself a cup of something. For me, it's a raw goat's milk iced latte that is no longer iced because I made it hours ago. But that is mom life. Takes you four hours to consume one cup of coffee, right? Last week, I asked y'all over on Instagram, which if you're not following me, by the way, you definitely need to. It's the Jamie Wolfer because Jamie Wolfer is already taken. By whom? I don't know. <laughs> if you had any questions for me so we could have a little Q&A, haven't done one of those in a hot minute. And so that's what we're doing today. I'm going to get my face ready, chat with you guys. I'm going to double dip, which we Enneagram 3s absolutely love. And I'm going to get ready while talking with you guys. And let's see how far we can get. I mean, we got here, but we cover some things that I don't even know if I should have said out loud. I called myself out. So prepare yourself. So prepare yourself. And without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Here we go. Let's do this thing. <laughs> So one of the first questions that I got asked was specifically about these eye masks. I, I wouldn't call myself necessarily like a skincare girly. I don't know a whole lot about a whole lot of things, but I do know that after my baby was up until 2 a.m., these make me look like that was not a true story. So these are the Marie Marine Collagen Eye Gels. I am telling you, I recommend these to a friend and she tried them. She bought them and I was like, what do you think? What do you think? She goes, they certainly made my under eyes less puffy. And I was like, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and link these in the description box for you. Now, these are cleaner. These are not the cleanest things I've ever seen in my life. There are some ingredients in here that I don't love, but there are some ingredients that I do love, such as red algae extract, marine collagen, pearl extract, camellia japonica flower extract. So there are some really cool natural ingredients in this, along with some other preservatives to keep them from going moldy. Um, among other things. So I have had these on for, I think about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. And it says you're not supposed to use these more than once and I totally do. I save them. <laughs> like the cheapskate that I am. Okay, I save the packaging. I put it back in. Cause listen, there's no way you use all of the serum in one go. And then I put it in a little reusable bag and I put it in my fridge the treat, the experience that I get, you tap in the, all the excess product, of putting those cool under eye gels on, especially after a long night with baby. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. And you're supposed to put it on clean, dry skin, but um, today I put it on top of my skincare just because how my, <laughs> how my day has been going so far. First things first, I'm going to go in with my Beauty Care Naturals flawless face primer. If you are looking for a clean beauty company, this is it. This is not going to be a clean makeup look. I'm definitely going to be using toxic products. <laughs> I always feel really guilty when you put it, when you say it out loud like that. Um, but since I am going to be filming this video and another, maybe two videos after this, I hope if the baby sleeps long enough and the kids are gone long enough that I can like really crank out a couple videos today. I want my makeup to for sure look good and kind of be locked into place. However, if you are looking for a clean beauty company, Beauty Care Naturals, this is my favorite foundation. This is my favorite clean foundation. Look, there's like nothing left in it. <laughs> I love this stuff. I actually have a code for 10% off. I'll go ahead and put it on the screen right here and I'll link it down below. It is the cutest little owner. It's this real small company. But what I love about this foundation is that it's an actual foundation and not a tinted moisturizer. So many, hold on, I should get some traps on. So many clean beauty companies, their foundation is literally a tinted moisturizer. I call it the LaCroix of foundation. It's like someone burped tint into like a face oil or something. It doesn't really have a lot of impact. And for a lot of people, that totally works. Congratulations. For me, I have aggressively dark under eyes. Always have, probably always will. They're genetic. It, some people are like, eh, maybe it's allergies. I, I'm not allergic to anything. Or I'm allergic to everything. And that's why my face constantly looks like this. So I tend to use a little bit more intense under eye concealers that when it comes to clean beauty, doesn't really work very well for me because they don't last or they don't stay. So um, that's been kind of my battle with clean beauty. I love it conceptually. I wish it worked better for my face or my needs. But if I am going to use a foundation, a clean beauty foundation, this is it because it's an actual foundation. And I actually, I do love specifically, and some people might not like this. I love that there's no SPF in this. So then you can control how much SPF you use or not at all. Okay. So now I'm going in with my flawless face primer. So this is a clean beauty one. I love how this one feels. Why did I just do that with my face? Probably because my baby's been doing it like crazy. See, I don't mind any of the discoloration on my natural face. I think freckles are adorable. 
I love, I have some discoloration up here. I don't mind it really and truly. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I have been a little bit not great about washing my face after wearing toxic makeup. I gotta stop calling it that. After no, wearing not clean makeup um, and I got these little breakouts on my forehead. So I gotta be a little bit more mindful of that and be more cognizant of actually, I can't just oil cleanse on days where I wear more intense makeup. I have to like actually proper wash it to get it off my face because otherwise all this happens. The only reason I go heavier with my foundation ever is because of my under eyes. Where I'm really revealing a lot about my insecurities right now, aren't I? Now that the primer is in place, going with my orange concealer, I have not answered a single question yet. And we are how many minutes into this video? <laughs> okay, it's gonna be a long one, folks. Buckle up. Do you have any good recommendations or info for health and fertility resources? There's another question that said, will you still do a fertility video or did I miss it? You're not expecting this to be like such an emotional thing for me. Hold. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to go in with the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth Normal to Dry Skin Foundation. And I am going to, I think it's still called Emulsify, even if it's with something like this. I'm going to add in some oil to it to kind of break it up just a little bit and give me, in my opinion, a little bit more of a natural finish. Here's the deal. I've been holding out on you guys. I have been wanting to start my own podcast for a hot minute. Now, why do I say my own? Because I have two podcasts, but those are shared with someone else. And I kind of feel like, in a lot of ways, um, they're not really mine at all. And that is kind of an emotionally heavy statement to make, especially because behind the scenes, business-wise, things have just not been what I wanted them to be for quite some time now. Um, and no, it's not something that I'm probably really gonna fully get into now if ever but I really want to that's why I'm making a push to make sure I'm doing all this content on my personal channel that's why I'm making a push to like actually start doing reels on my Instagram and build out my personal brand is because you know this is this is the branding that I know that I can grow the way I want to grow it and depend on for as long as I want to keep doing it so to answer your question I already filmed it I filmed it I recorded it as a podcast and I just I have like two podcasts recorded so far it's like long form chatty educational style content that yeah I'm really excited about but I'm also really nervous because I've never done a podcast on my own before I've never done the setup I've never done any of those things so I'm kind of like I'm nervous so to answer your question yes it's been recorded I just need to figure out if I'm gonna actually bite the bullet and start this podcast or if I'm just gonna toss it up as a YouTube video and call it a day and not pursue that because I don't know if necessarily and adding another thing to my plate right now is the best idea I'm just really passionate about it and I really want to do it I just don't know I just don't know I just don't know probably for the same reason that I haven't released my merch to my main channel yet it's just feels like putting a piece of me out there you know what I mean? I love this shade match for me. This is classic ivory. And I'm telling you, with that oil mixed in, you can still see all of my freckles. You can still see all of my skin texture that I don't mind, but provides a much better base for a more intense concealer. So to answer your question about the fertility stuff, I got a lot. I got a lot of education on Instagram. No, and I know a lot of people poo-poo on it, but when I Google things, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to keep looking. And so I did, I got to release that. I got to figure out how to release that video. Even admitting out loud that I like attempted to start a podcast now puts a fire into me to like actually do something. Um, the Weston A. Price Instagram would be a fantastic place to look because it talks about fertility and nutrition and how so much of that is interconnected. There are quite a few accounts that I've learned a lot off of a lot about um, what I was eating and how that's affecting things and how that's affecting my hormones and how that's affecting whether or not my body can actually get pregnant. So let me see if I can put together a list of some of those accounts and drop them down below for you. Now, these are all opportunities to educate yourself. These are not a fix-all, they're not a cure-all. And now a lot of people in this space talk about pro-metabolic eating. I tried it and I put on a decent amount of weight. And so I, I in hindsight, I, I don't know, I know I needed to put on some, 
but I don't know if I would have done it as gung-ho as I did. However, it's still worth looking into. So pro-metabolic eating, uh, estrogen dominance, endocrine disruptors, which all of the products I'm using right now have endocrine disruptors in them. That's one of the defining factors of what makes something clean or not. Does it have endocrine disruptors? However, we eat very clean. We take pretty good care of our bodies. So I think occasionally using not clean makeup on my face when I'm really rigid, strict in other areas of my life um, helps to kind of balance that out. Did I answer your question? I don't know. Hopefully the accounts down below will help you out for sure. And then if there's any books, I will link those there as well. And if I just need to shut up and get over myself and launch this podcast, will you just tell me? Sometimes I just need a friend to be like, hey, just handle your stuff, bro. Like, just do it. Don't get so caught up in what people could possibly think about you in Egram 3 and just take the plunge. I just don't know what else I'd talk about. I did a really long about me one where I shared something I don't think I've ever shared on the internet ever before. That's a pretty poignant part of my life. Um, and then I did one about fertility and I don't know what to do next. So I'm a little stuck there. So if you have an idea, please drop that below and maybe I can record something soon and then just get the whole process started. So now I'm going in with the Halo Glow Beauty One Contour um, by e.l.f. And I've been doing this thing where I'm applying it actually like on my cheekbone instead of below because that's what all the girlies are doing these days. I don't know. And I then just blend it out with a brush. I'm going for a combined looks good on camera and in person because there are those are two very different things. <laughs> what looks good on camera can often be frightening in person. So I just, you know. I'll go for like a, a little bit of both. For example, blush never really shows up on camera unless you add a lot of it. Speaking of which, this is the Peony Pink Cream Blush by Honest Beauty. Cleaner, cleaner. And again, I'm actually trying to actively avoid the apples of my cheeks. I went a little low on this. It's a new thing I'm trying, I don't know. How are you all doing? How has the transition been going from family of si five to a family of six? Honestly, I still read family of six and be like, wait, what, what are you talking about? Like we're a family of five with a baby. <laughs> That's what we are. <laughs> Which makes no sense to anyone but my own brain noggin. It's been delightful. I had no idea how smitten the family would be with this freaking baby. She's a dream. She is a total delight. She is spicy when it comes to sleepy time. Um, and unfortunately, I'm the only one that can get her to sleep. Which is why right now I'm not taking on any weddings. Because... I, I, yeah, she still needs to be nursed to sleep. And I'm the only one with the proper equipment for that. She hasn't taken the bottle, but we also haven't tried. It's just a slower, more intentional season. But I'm shocked with how much the girls love her and how much Silas loves her and how much Elias loves her and how much I love her. Like, there's no big sibling jealousy at all whatsoever. If anything, they actually fight over her in like really cute ways for the most part and occasionally not cute ways. I'm realizing I should probably set this real quick before I move on. And this is a really old, this is a Besame uh, translucent powder. I was actually told by my cousin slash makeup artist to use a translucent setting powder. You get some on one of these like soft things that the, the applicator that comes with it tap the excess off at the back of your hand. So no more heavy baking. We're going real light. Again, I want the intersection of looking good on camera and not crazy in person. And I also do that up top as well because I put concealer up there. So yeah, thank you for asking. The transition's been beautiful. We love it so very much. I'm looking forward to the day where we can leave the house a little bit more easily. <laughs> and I do think her nap schedule is like really evening out which makes me feel like I can breathe for the first time in quite some time. So I did the cream products and now I'm going back in with powder. You obviously saw me do the blush and now I'm just going to do a dash of a powdered contour bronzer situation. It looks real cut on camera. <laughs> it does not look that intense in person. I'll probably end up blending that out a little bit. But I just want a little definition, not too much. You know, just just a little bit. And now we're gonna move on to eyes. I'm gonna get a big broad brush like this and just do an ivory color across my entire lid. I don't know why this has been my go-to look for basically my entire makeup wearing career, but I always get like an ivory color go across my entire lid, focusing on the inner corner to brighten it up because I do have discolored eyelids, which again, it's fine dark circles. It's all good. I figured out how to work with it and kind of carry that across a little bit. And now in the crease, I'm going to go in with a fluffy brush like this, but it's still pretty compact. So it allow me the opportunity to get some color in there and then swirl it around. Um, actually, do I want to go a little, do I want to go a little dark today? Maybe. 
Okay. I know all the makeup girlies start with a mid shade and then go dark. I don't. I do the opposite because I am worried that I'm not going to be able to blend well. So I'm going to go in with this. Oh, hold on. Hold on. With this shade right here. And I'm going to take an angled brush. This is the Real Techniques Insta Pop Crease Brush. So just going to get a little bit of that, not too much, and pop it right there. That's it. And carry it up just a little. Now, another thing I can do, because it does have that little bit of a flattened edge, I can carry it under my eye and create that C shape that really kind of gives it that open look. I always try to avoid dark colors towards my inner eye because it's already dark in there anyways. So I want to draw attention out this direction. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that on the opposite side. And remember, application does not need to be perfect here. We're just getting the powder in place. Then I'm going to go in with that fluffy brush I mentioned just a moment ago. And because this is a warmer tone brown, see how this is a cool tone and that's a cool tone. This is a little bit warmer right here. I'm going to go in with that as my mid shade next. Get a little bit, tap off any excess and go right over the top with that windshield wiper motion to really blend out any of that harsh darkness. But look how pretty that is. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that I like the results, okay? So this provides that transition shade from the ivory to that dark color, in my opinion, in a really seamless way that I can pull off. Because if I went with the dark color on top, I just have to keep blending with the mid color anyway. So why not put the dark color second and then blend with the mid color? You know what I'm saying? See, and that was so fast. That was like two minutes. Next, I'm gonna go in with just a regular brown eyeliner. This one's wet and wild because um, I'm still attached to things from middle school. It's fine. And I'm going to do just above my lash line and kind of drag in dashes. Because I'm going to go back through and blend this out. The only thing I really try to make sure that I'm careful of is that I don't stray too far away from the lash line. Okay. This looks crazy. So I just like stopped right there. Don't worry. Don't, wor don't worry. Don't be, don't be scared. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Fun fact for those of you who don't know, um, I am, I would say partially blind, but I have vision issues in my right eye. I developed a cataract, yes, a cataract, which is normally an old people thing, uh, by the time I was five. So I was blind in that eye. I used to run into parked cars with my bike because I couldn't see them. And my parents thought it was because I was going too fast. And if you, anyone knows me, I'm not a daredevil type. I'm not a scaredy cat. I'm just like not the type to just rush around on a bicycle. Never have been, probably never will be. So doing my eyeliner is one of the hardest parts of doing my makeup because if I close this eye, I can't see. Oh, okay. So wait, I had a cataract. I had it removed when I was six and then I had lens replacement when I was 14, I think. So I'm permanently farsighted in that eye and I have no peripheral vision at all whatsoever. In fact, I can't even see my hand until here's where I can see something is here, but here's where I can see my hand. So if you can't tell, that's like... That's crazy. So when I'm driving, I'm like, <laughs> I turn a lot. Uh, I turn real far to make sure I have a full field of view. So getting eyeliner on this eye is always a test of patience and skill. That's why I like this look so much because this is where you come in with a very flat brush. Super, super flat, but it's not necessarily like a tapered eyeliner brush because I'm not doing a wing today. And I will just drag that over the top of the eyeliner and smudge it up. And notice that I'm carrying it towards the inner corner of my eye. You can smudge up as well if you want to. Also smudge underneath. And it's just a really soft, simple, everyday look. I find myself reaching for brown more frequently these days because it's so much softer. It's such like a great everyday color and it really complements my features. And now here's where things are gonna get difficult because I can't see and, and I have to hold my eye because I have to control how much my eye closes and open so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so when they're like, don't hold your eyes. I don't have a choice and you're not my mom. See, I accidentally messed up a little and went too high. Oh, it's so annoying, that's fine. Now, if I want to build up that color because I've created like a waxy base with the brown, I can go back in with an eyeshadow. I'm gonna go back in with the, the darker, more grayed out tone and go directly over the top. I'll do one eye and then leave the other one undone so you can kind of see what the difference looks like. See that? If you don't see the difference, that's fine. To me, that makes a big difference. Makes the eyeliner have like a bigger impact. Gets it darker without being black black, which I love. I keep the air conditioning off in the office while I'm recording because it's really loud. 
We're really putting that primarily pure deodorant to the test right now. So this is the part where I actually jump around a little bit. I use the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Mascara. And I'm not going to lie to you. I miss the, the, the orange stuff so much. It's just not the same. The formula is not the same, but it says clean. So I'm like trying to use it, but it, it gets like crumbly a little bit. Don't love, but love it better than a lot of the other clean options out there. So I'm silly and I always do this and I don't know why. I take the mascara and I tuck it between my legs to warm it up or in my pocket or something. So while that's happening, and it's not like it gets really warm. It's just a part of my everyday process. I have abandoned the questions. Okay, so here, <laughs> so while that warms up, <laughs> between, <laughs> between my, <laughs> never mind. I'm going to just take a clear, this is the 24-hour brow setter by Benefit. Just a clear brow product and just shape my brows a little bit. I could fill them in. I'm not going to. I don't want to. It's fine. I do like my brows. I have a couple patches that for some reason don't grow but you know what it's natural baby <laughs> listen to me justifying being lazy with my makeup right now how did you build the courage to start your own company slash business I, I i don't know i just felt like i couldn't not do it if that makes sense like i really 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 wanted to and i had no idea how much i would love being an entrepreneur until i started and then i was like holy smokes this is it. This is the best. I love being my own boss. I love the challenge of trying to make money on my own. I love so many elements about it. So it wasn't, it was less the courage to, uh, I guess, I always had the desire. There's them. Vision, intention, means. I had the vision. I had the means. I just had to work on the intention. Did I actually really want to do it? And and I don't know. I, I guess maybe I just was too too naive to realize that it should be scary. <laughs> Does that make sense? I feel like that's the best way to describe it. I guess my encouragement to you is what's the worst that could happen? Genuinely, what is the worst that could happen? Will you lose some money? Will you lose some time? What part of this is scary? Why are you scared? Why do you feel like you are lacking the courage? Um, and if the answers come back to, well, you're just scared of failure, then that's not a good enough reason. And that sounds really rough. But I'm saying that also for myself. Oh, did you just Mr. Miyagi me? <laughs> About the freaking podcast? <sighs> oh, I'm Miyagi myself. I'm scared of failing. I'm scared of putting something out there that's just me. That's why the merch feels so personal, because it's just me, you know? It's just my thoughts. It's just my designs. It's just me. And that's why... This podcast sounds scary because what if people would find me boring? They, these videos feel different. You know, it's on podcast. Okay. Did anyone ex see that coming? <laughs> if the only thing that's stopping you is fear of failure, well, then that's silly. Jamie. I will say there are other elements that I feel like are stopping me. Um, not knowing how to do things. Obviously, with the other podcasts, I... Uh, I had a company. I have a company, you know, and someone else started up the actual tech behind it. Starting an email list feels nerve wracking. Like, hold on, got to tuck the mascara back in. <laughs> it feels overwhelming. And I think because I really like the pace of life right now and nothing feels too intense, that the idea of like really trying to start heavy admin work sounds exhausting. I don't really, I don't want to do that. But I think mostly it's because I'm just worried about failing. So building up the courage, basically, it for me, with wedding planning, it felt like a no-brainer because it was something I loved and I was good at and it didn't have much overhead and all it took was my time. There was a season in life, it was right after I got fired from one of my favorite jobs of all time and it was heartbreaking that I met with a, a business mentor that I truly deeply admire and I was like, what do I do? What do I, Amy, what do I do? Like, what do I do? And she said, if you're going to do anything, the smartest thing to do is to start a business that takes nothing but your time. No product, no inventory, no overhead, nothing but your time. You want to be the most profitable as possible? Do something that takes nothing but your time. And surprise, surprise, I started my wedding planning business a couple years later, then started YouTube videos, and then got featured on Wedding Chicks. And one of the main founders was Amy. <laughs> I was 
So had my videos played over on their stuff for about a year and it was fantastic. And I think that helped a lot with my exposure in the beginning with YouTube and helping people to find my channel and helping to grow what we do. So I guess building confidence for me was like twofold, right? I have to walk through the logical elements of this, cost, overhead, time, um, do, doing market research if you feel like it would make sense for whatever you're doing. In fact, market research does make a lot of sense in a lot of capacities. And coming up with a logical business plan of what you want to do. And I know that does not sound saucy at all. It doesn't sound fun. Like no one wants to do that. But coming up with the approach of how am I going to be successful and what does success look like? To me, successful means make money. Yes, passion projects are great. That's why I have animals, like a lot of animals. Those, that's, those are my passion projects. We don't make money off this hobby farm. We don't even make enough money to cover our chicken feed costs with the eggs that we sell. Like that's, that's a sunk cost for sure. Um, but when it comes to running a business, I want to make sure it's profitable. That, that to me is considered success. So once I figure out the logical side of it, I have to come overcome the emotional side of it of... What is stopping me? Is it a lack of knowledge? Is it a lack of belief in myself? Um, is it a lack of time? What are the elements that's stopping me emotionally from doing that? Because I could probably knock each one of those out with logic if I sat down and thought about it, but I have to get, I have to get these two connected to be able to make that work. So I don't know, I'm a big fat hypocrite, okay? <laughs> Just launch your stupid podcast. Because I'm terrible with mascara application, I'm gonna take one of the little spoolies and I literally just flick off any mascara like I got on my lash line, uh, on my eyelid, and that mascara is just, I think they switched the formula because that is really underwhelming. So I'm gonna go in with the low toxic stuff, but this is the waterproof kind, okay, which makes it real risky. But this, I've done this once or twice on top of this, and it's like, wait till you see my lashes. Oh no. Do you see the difference? And now I got this up here. Oh, now I've complicated things drastically. That's why I always keep one of these handy. A little eyelash separator. Oh, there we go. There we go. God, so much better. Full disclosure, I just spent an embarrassing amount of time working on my eyelashes because uh, I, I do that with great frequency. Okay, now I'm go And I actually still don't like the way that it looks. Moving right along. I'm going to go in with the LA Girl Perfect Precision Lip Liner in shade Cafe. This is, I don't even know if this is the correct shade, but I've been doing my lashes for too long. I'm now stressed out and need to move on to other things. <laughs> yeah, this looks too orange. Oh, well, much like the eyeliner did by providing a waxy base, this uh, lip liner is going to provide a waxy edge for what is currently my favorite nude color, and that is also by LA Girl. Flat velvet in the color Snuggle, super simple. And now we need a makeup setting spray. I use this one by Bella Jade Botanicals. It has organic green and white teas in it. It also has phenoxyethanol as a preservative. So you know, you win some, you lose some. Let me give this a once over. All right, and while that sets, honestly, this is the makeup that I filmed. I am... <laughs> And last question, how involved are you in your wedding business now that you aren't doing events, taking inspo? I am and I'm not. So I technically have two different businesses. One business where I run the courses out of and the two podcasts that I currently have. And one business where I have all of the forward facing stuff, which is YouTube, Instagram, um, any of the actual hands on real person weddings. Those are all just me and my own company and this other company I um, is like a company with someone else. And so as far as anything with this company goes, I am only doing social media content right now. Like I said earlier, I'm not planning any weddings at the moment because my baby still needs to be nursed to sleep. So it's making things really complicated, but I'm still very much active over here. We got weekly meetings, we got stuff that we're working on, things that we're constantly building to help support people online as much as possible and, and support all of my online clients through my course and things like that. I'm still very much active as a wedding planner. I'm just all digital at this point. And I think maybe sometime in the near future, I'd consider taking on more clients. Once my baby starts, you know, sleeping or falling asleep without me, we could dream, right? All right, so that's what we have for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for enjoying this really erratic and kind of all over the place. Get ready with me, but we were due for a chat. I haven't chatted with you guys in so long. I love you. Thank you for being here. Again, if you have any podcast suggestions, because I call myself out uh, and now I need to do something about it, please feel free to drop those in the comment section. I'd appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, jump on down there, hit subscribe, and come join me over here on this channel to see if I actually follow through on my word. Although I made no promises. <clears throat> but now I have to do it, don't I? Crap. And until next week, bye guys! Bye.